Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my prenatal yoga teacher training. Um, this video is about how to pick poses to add in your class. So my daughter is over here having her bottle. So you may see me look over there. And I will mention again to get the full course and all the detail and um, manual for the course. You can find that on my website, www.nanfamyoga.com. And for right now, I am posting the videos free on YouTube. But if you're watching this in my course, it's probably been taken down from YouTube and only available in my course. Um, so don't worry about that. So let's go back to the topic. How do you choose prenatal yoga poses to incorporate in your sequence? So it's very simple. All you need to do is ask yourself, does this honor um, the mom's baby's space? Does it honor the mom's baby's space and just honor the baby in general? So the example of that, because there's so many poses that we can do and there's different stages and uh, each pregnancy is very different. So what might feel right for one mom may not feel right for another. But in general, when you pick a pose, say, let's say pretend this is obviously not, um, this is, well, may not be obvious to you, but you don't do many back bends in prenatal um, yoga. And if you do do a back bend, you want to modify, for example, upward facing dog. Now, I'll give you a minute to answer <laughs> internal. Would you add upward facing dog in your prenatal yoga class? Okay, I'll let you think about that. And as you think about that, you want to ask yourself, does that pose honor the mom and her baby? And most likely the answer will be no. And this is especially true for women who are in second, third, and fourth trimester. Or sorry, there's only three trimesters. Actually, no, no, there's four. Um, what they call is like, um, after you have the babies, like postnatal, they also call it the fourth trimester. But anyways, um, and the, the answer to the up, upward facing dog, it's no, because you're laying on your stomach, uh, which does not honor the baby's space. Okay. And it also doesn't honor the mom's body. Um, so that's, that's the way you can go about thinking how to add poses to your sequence. Another one would be, would you add camel? Okay. This one's a complex one. So then you would go in your head and you would think, does camel honor my mom, the, the student and their baby? And the question, um, the answer to that is no. However, okay. So this is a critical thinking part. You can modify camel pose for them. So a way that you can modify camel pose is have the ladies sit in hero's pose on their heels. Okay. So sitting on their heels, but connected to heels, legs are bent. They can interlace their hands behind their lower back, flip the palms down and just kind of lift the heart up and then place the palms on a block. That's a back bend. Okay. But that back bend only focuses on the upper back. It doesn't provide too much, um, abdominal pressure. Okay. So if you can think of a way to modify the pose that honors a mom and her baby, then modify. But if you cannot think of a way to modify, for example, upward facing dog, uh, you just do not add that pose to the class. If the mom is in first trimester and she is, you know, not showing and she's still doing her regular yoga class and she's doing all these other things and she says she wants to do her upper facing dog, you let her do her upper facing dog. It's all up to her. She will listen to her body. But for safety reasons, I would say you are, I assume that you are teaching a class that has women of all different trimesters. They're not going to all be in first trimester, all going to be in second or third. So to be on the safe side, I would just not add upward facing dog. And if they wanted to do up their upward facing dog, they do it on their own accord and, and they, and they instruct themselves. With that being said, um, 
An alternative for upward facing dog is cow pose, okay? Or you have the women hold a, um, just be on all fours and practice their belly breathing if even cow pose does not feel good, okay? Especially when they're in their third trimester and belly's a bit bigger and they can feel their tummy stretching and they don't wanna do uh, any back bending, give them the option to do all fours or add cow pose in there. Um, yeah, so that's the way you can determine if you should have a pose in your sequence or not and think about how you can modify it so the mom and baby is honored. All right, see you in the next video.